Hi, my name is Dr. Sanjay Sharma and I'm a retina specialist in Canada. DRCRNet has published the one and two year results of its protocol T study, a head to head comparison of three anti VEGF drugs used to treat DME aflibercept, ranibizumab, and bevacizumab. 660 patients across 89 clinical sites took part in this randomized efficacy and safety study. Overall, at one year, all three drugs had similar safety profiles, and when patients present with relatively good vision, produce similar visual outcomes. At one year, a flibercept was associated with statistically significant better visual results, but the differences in gain may not be great enough to influence clinical practice. The reason the aflibercept group did better was driven by the efficacy in the subgroup of patients who had the worst vision, those with less than 69 letters. In this group, treatment with aflibercept saw a mean visual acuity letter score improvement of 18.9, compared to 14.2 with ranibizumab and 11.8 for bevacizumab. This was both statistically significant and clinically meaningful. But for patients who had visual acuity of less than 69 ETDRS letters, aflibercept offers a 34% greater chance of a three-line gain in vision versus ranibizumab and a 63% greater chance versus bevacizumab. At two years, the mean visual acuity letter score improvement from baseline was 12.8 for aflibercept, 10 with bevacizumab, and 12.3 with ranibizumab. Among eyes with less than 69 ETDRS letters of visual acuity at baseline, aflibercept remains superior to bevacizumab. However, unlike at the end of the first year, aflibercept was no longer statistically significantly better than ranibizumab. At the two-year visit, the central subfield thickness decreased the most with aflibercept compared with bevacizumab and ranibizumab. This effect was further enhanced when visual acuity at baseline was less than 69 ETDRS letters, where larger reductions in the central subfield thickness were observed across all three agents. 41% of the aflibercept treated group went on to receive laser treatment for persistent DME. This was significantly lower than both the 52% associated with bevacizumab treatment and the 64% of ranibizumab treated patients. The number of visits at one and two years were similar in each of the three treatment arms, and about half the number of injections needed in the first year were needed in the second year across all three treatment arms. The two year results of this study also showed that the risk of antiplatelet trilis collaboration, or APTC, defined cardiovascular events was highest in the ranibizumab treated group, where 12% of patients experienced at least one event. This rate was statistically significantly higher than the 5% figure associated with aflibercept treatment, but not statistically significantly higher than the 8% associated with bevacizumab treatment. Rates of ocular adverse events including endophthalmitis and post-injection inflammation, as well as serious adverse events, deaths, and hospitalizations were low and similar across all three treatment arms. In conclusion, Protocol T demonstrated that substantial visual gains are associated with the administration of each of the three anti-VEGF agents for the treatment of DME. There were significantly greater improvements following a flibercept treatment in the first year of treatment of patients with the worst baseline vision versus both ranibizumab and bevacizumab. At the end of the second year, a flibercept remained statistically superior to bevacizumab, but was not significantly superior to ranibizumab. The higher cardiovascular adverse event signal associated with ranibizumab treatment in the study deserves further investigation in order to better understand any clinical implications.